to Rain Boots and Radish Roots. I'm Tanya and I live in Raleigh, North Carolina. Um, we, if you can tell, I don't know if you can tell that I'm in an RV and we are getting ready to go to the Homesteading Festival in Columbia, Tennessee. I'm super excited. I also don't know if you can tell but my voice is a little funny because we were all like one person gets a cold when you have a big family, the next person, they don't, we don't all get sick at the same time. We all like take turns. So for the, for the past like three weeks, someone in our house has had a cold and then I um, was the last one to get it. So haven't seen any videos. I'm going to try to do a really quick run through of the garden today for you guys. Like just a quick highlight before we go. And um, right now I got to get the camper ready for travel. So in just a minute, we will um, be in the garden. Okay, here we are in the garden. The camper is all travel ready. And um, behind me here, we've got our carrots. These are like our rainbow carrots, like for eating in salads and whatnot. Um, I'm gonna turn you around and just do a quick little spin through the garden. Okay, so here we've got carrots, the ones I was talking about. They're actually doing really well considering the heat we've been enduring. And when I, we come home, so we're gonna be gone for 10 days. When we come back, a lot of things are gonna get changed, but I did not want to make those changes before we left. These right here are actually plants for a friend of mine. Um, my parsley is going bananas right here. I need to cut back all of these blossoms. Um, lettuce is looking pretty good. You can see this is about to go sideways. Um, but there's not a lot I can do about that right now. We have more lettuce than we know what to do with. Peas will get yanked out as soon as we get back. These snow peas and these... Um, sugar snap peas and even the green peas and you'll see they're just pretty well spent this bed right here we have um, just all of our starts lined up in here because when we come back we have a veggio raised bed that we have that will be installed and then I will also be planting in here um, pumpkins are looking really good really really good and they're vining out just like I was hoping to kind of take care of this weedy, grassy. Um, you can actually see like where they've already shaded out a lot of the weeds. I love big leafed plants for that reason. Ghost pepper. We, guys, we've had so much rain. In a two day period, we had f over four inches of rain because I dumped it out at two so Between four and six inches of rain, it was crazy um <clears throat> more pumpkins also when we come home this garlic is coming out um the tomatillos right here are blossoming i don't know if you can see that right there um but they're looking pretty happy they should be even happier once this garlic comes out and once these peas come out Right here, our loofah is starting to climb. Look at, we've even got a little baby loofah. Hello, baby loofah. <clears throat> we've got our gherkins going a little berserk over here too. That's exciting. And, and our cucamelons. Thought the gherkins were gonna take them over, but they're coming through. I feel like I should probably put this little guy up so he doesn't eat my sunflower and take over. <clears throat> Kale. Kale's going bananas. Kind of like I'm standing here thinking I want to come back out here before we get in the camper and cut some lettuce and kale before we go. <clears throat> the fennel. Look how beautiful that fennel looks. It's so good. looks so good. Um, we've got all kinds of basil going bananas like it's just exploded the garden has exploded since you've last seen it 
the herb bed is just going crazy. I pulled out all of the cilantro. It all went to seed. I will reseed cilantro when I come home. Um, but for now, that's all radishes in here. Um, the rhubarb's going crazy. Let's come back over here. Every single day, I am picking like a, a pot's worth of beans out here. Just every single day. You can see those peas are gone too. They're ready to go. Because we have wax beans, green beans, and purple beans. I've pulled squash in here. What? So, the video of the crunchy mom? I did see that video. That was that was hilarious. Thank you for <laughs> thank you for sharing, Toby. So in here, yeah, we've got squash. They're coming in. We've got Magda squash. It, we've um, got delicata squash, and we have some zucchinis, different kinds of zucchinis, and some patty pan. They're all doing so well right now. The black beans are definitely suffering the most of all of our beans. <laughs> and check out that Swiss chard. And they're going to be a lot happier once these beans, these peas come out too. So those peas have got to go. They, they're just not doing what we need right now. And then celery. The celery looks really good. It's so happy. I mean, the garden is in full overwhelming swing. Like we're pulling in a lot of stuff. But <clears throat> it's not, it's not sad by any means other than those peas. Check out the tomatoes. They're doing really well. I've got my determinants in cages, my indeterminants staked up. When we come home, we're definitely going to have to pull off some suckers and tie up some stuff because they're growing like crazy right now. This sad little guy I transplanted yesterday. He may not make it, and that's okay. Pepper bed is a little sad too, in my opinion, but peppers take a little while to take off, so it'll be okay. There's some more gherkins. They're going a little crazy too. Finally, like they were slow to take off as well. Let's put this little guy in there. And then the last thing I'm gonna show you, there's two things. Number one is blueberries pretty excited about those we have five blueberry plants and now these melons I just they are not they're not looking happy to me but also that's okay I wasn't counting on them for some serious food but the herb bed you can see is just taken off out of nowhere the caraway the dill Look at that beautiful borage, which is not hard to grow, but I'm still really excited. Comfrey, bee balm. It's just happy, happy, happy. Look at these green peas. I have, um, there's bugs on them for one. That's not good. Um, and two, my 19 year old is coming home to take care of those today. The ginger has come in. The mints. Now look at how different these mints look. That one was store-bought. These were from seed, peppermint. And then that's an orange mint I got from Azure Standard I was pretty excited about. Ellen Campin, look how pretty that looks. Catnip, going a little crazy. That yarrow is happy. So that's it. That's a quick look at what happened while we were, I also had like basically an infirmary in my house. <laughs> um, I will give you a tour when we come back and we'll see how much work I, I'll have ahead of me. It's going to be a lot. And we will also do some videos of our trip.
Okay, here we go. We're off to the homesteading festival in Columbia, Tennessee. Our first stop is in um, Newland, North Carolina. And we will be staying at Mountain River Family Campground, one of our most favorites. If you've never been and you are in the area, you should definitely um, make a reservation. We absolutely love it, and that will be a halfway point for us. So we will be making this drive in two different days, but we're gonna spend a couple of days at Mountain River because it's just so wonderful, one of our favorite places. And that's about it. It's way in the audio down at the I know, it keeps kind of falling down. It doesn't look like it's raining that hard on my feet. It's nice having an awning because this would be awful. It sure is nice having some rain since it was 75% humidity before that. Yeah, it's a little cold out here. Yeah, it's cold out here. Yeah, it's cold
Pork Rind, who we really, really had a great time talking with Pork Rind. Um, so if you don't know who Pork Rind is, which I'm sure you do, you should definitely go check him out on Instagram. <laughs> What's his, his handle? What's he say? He's pastor. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. <laughs> yeah. Um, what would you say was like your number one takeaway from the event? Um, the pigs. The pigs. Like Tell me, we really enjoyed the pigs. And the cats. Uh, I would say, I don't, I don't know what the takeaway was. It was nice being around such an amazing group of uh, God loving, mm -hmm. openly professing, mm -hmm. just very pleasant people uh, for those two days. Like this. Joe Salatin said many times that it's this is his tribe, this is his group of people that are, are like minded and that's After one mile, keep right and take oh, the so, exit. Hold on. Take the exit. We gotta take the exit that one would, mile. That would be my that, that's what I enjoyed the most. I enjoyed this the, the community. Yeah. That, that was good. Um something else that they had a bee bees keepers there talking about bees. There were um there was a milking goat with her kid. There were milking demonstrations with cows, chickens, pigs. What else was? Yes, Peacocks wandering around, around where we parked. Cows, goats, <laughs> mules. Yeah. It was awesome. It's a farm. It was absolutely a farm. Some people got stuck in the mud. They had to get pushed out. Um, music. The music was fantastic. VIP was totally worth it. Yeah, I think After my number one... The oops. Right. Take I think I can silence that. Yeah, I don't even want to. So, I think my most enjoyable moment was for sure when we had the VIP panel and they were talking. And it was a QA. and a But there were tangents. And you could tell it was... It was just a real experience and honesty and um, just real frank conversations, frankly. Um, sorry, we got distracted because exit. Um, <laughs> uh, yeah, the VIP panel. That was just a really good experience. There were... Well, there really wasn't a lot of talk about farming <laughs> or homesteading. Um, there was a lot of talk about faith and overcoming and um, community. It was, I thought it was fantastic. That was my favorite experience. Aside from hearing Jamie Johnson sing. And who was not in the on the billing. Had no idea that he was going to be there. Well, and I think there was, uh, I mean, so we went to, you could choose which speaker you wanted to see. Right. There were always Some of the speakers, speakers were very were very specific. On what, like the one that he was talking about, building dirt. Like yes. How, I think the best way is to build dirt. And the one person was talking about, you know, how you can homeschool and how you mm -hmm. can be uh, profitable in your in your homestead. Right. So it just depends on which... We went to see the big names who I think their messages were maybe a little more universal and less specific. Correct. Uh, for, for anybody that was coming to see them that maybe wasn't as depth and the people who are really in depth that were already big time homesteaders could have gone to be more specialized and find out what sort of information they would need. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So when we went to the one who was talking about permaculture and setting up your your homestead and how much you can build on just a quarter of an acre. Um, yeah, we were past all we're past that. <laughs> we are past that. So we were getting like we, we stayed for a little while then we left and ironically, that's what we asked our 12 year old. We asked Toby what did what would, did he learn? And it was from that seminar. So um, it was kind of funny because it's the one that we were like, okay, we can leave this. We can leave and go to another one. Cause they always had four speakers going on. Um, I'm really, I wish I had not missed, was his name Thomas, Dr. Thomas? I don't remember. I'll have to, I'll have to um, put it in like the, link or something to his um, page below because listening to him talk he was he's is a currently a physician but he he's also a functional practitioner and yeah that was he really a, informative. He made a really cool point in the, in the, the Q&A session that we were yeah. part of talking about how his 
regular practice that he was a part of mm-hmm. until he started his own was actually reprimanding him for discussing food and nutrition more, more natural solutions to the problems his patients as opposed yes. to just writing them scripts um, mind blowing like yeah that is mind blowing like you, you think a doctor is his sole purpose in life is to make you well yeah. and, and better in every way yeah but in reality it seems the, the machine <laughs> of the, the pharmaceutical industry isn't isn't on board with that the system we all know that right yeah yeah and I've heard and I've heard a lot of people talk about um so YouTubers Doug and Stacy and the homesteading family they were all talking about um being off grid not just like the electrical system grid or the municipality grid but off the grid system for medical practicing too because there's a time when, for medicine in, in my opinion but there's a lot of healing to be done through food and lifestyle um, well and I think that's I think that's the best place to start yeah I mean you might have some sort of we have a daughter who has issue. severe asthma. There's no way she's going to be without asthma medicine. Right, but for for the most part, for the majority of Americans who are you know, semi-healthy, mm-hmm. changing your diet and eating yeah. more local, more nutritious food is, is definitely a good start. But we also have a 13-year-old who went from pre-diabetic and at risk of a cardiac event and throwing up all the time to com- completely better, completely back to normal and we did she did all of that with food changing food well and i think i mean you have to, you have to know what to change i think that's mm-hmm. the main test that's the biggest part yeah I, I agree i think seeing a functional practitioner is important because we tried to do it on our own and we were missing well, we that were she was allergic healthy. to eggs yeah we were still super healthy mm-hmm. we just didn't we didn't know exactly what the problem was. yeah and it's very specific to each individual so if we you know finding it out for specifically for her was important um but I'm, it was just, it was good to hear him talk, honestly. Yeah, that mm-hmm. a little bit that we heard. yeah, I wish I had, I wish, because we heard him during the VIP session, I wish I had made a mental note. But you can't see everything, there's so much going on. It's hard to see everything. And there were people there from everywhere. There were um, some of the vendors, one vendor was from North Dakota, um, Indiana, South Carolina, it's North much, Carolina, much Oregon. Oregon. Uh, just from everywhere. It's cool. Of course, old Joe Salatin was the, the highlight of the show. Everybody <coughs> wanted to see him talk yeah. to him. Yeah, yeah. And it's, well, you know, it's interesting is that he doesn't even have a YouTube or online social media presence. Of his you know, own, he's, yeah. He's written books and he's been on podcasts and documentaries, but mm-hmm. he's not putting out daily or weekly content like a lot of these people are. Yeah. He, I would say he was arguably the most famous person there. Yeah, well, Everyone I can't. Wanted True. Walking around, everyone wanted to talk to him. <clears throat> and and just a normal guy. He just walked in and he would sit down in the at like to listen and take notes to other speakers. Like a, a love of learning, clearly. Yeah. Which is awesome. Again, it's nice earth. to be around people like that. So he was more down to earth than uh, a certain movie star that was singing. Singing. <laughs> <laughs> nothing, nothing against him because I don't know him personally, but <laughs> yeah, that was just to draw crowds. I think that that person, that individual, that was there for the singing. Uh, I thought it was fantastic. I'd be happy to go back. The uh, the campsite uh, park that we stayed at was an RV campers RV campers RV. I always forget the S when I'm trying yeah. to search for so, it. So it was six minutes from the venue, the farm. Mm-hmm. So it made it easy for us to come back in the middle of the day. The, the food truck lines were ridiculous. I hope next year they have some more they were. food trucks available. The ported potties were clean. Yep, the bathrooms were good. And we had the, the private bathrooms in the VIP area for us mm-hmm. to use. Yep, so food that was or nice. Chips and snacks and waters uh, mm-hmm. for free because mm-hmm. of that VIP. And then a really, really cool gift. Whoa! <laughs> that was a big bounce. Um, <laughs> with all sorts of really nice stuff in it. Oh yeah, my goodness. The swag bags were full of really nice things. I would also say that if you have food issues, which you probably already know this, bring bring your own food because just because it's a homesteading event where people have very specific food, nutritional goals, 
doesn't mean that the food trucks there are gonna also support that. Yeah. <clears throat> I would say we did manage to like Morgan ordered um kind of like a Philly cheesesteak but without the cheese and without the bun so she had like basically like fajita filling with some french fries on the side and she didn't have any issues and her issues are dairy gluten and egg whites so we did manage to kind of yeah. get the skirt the skirt that problem but yeah, if nice you have an issue you bring your own get home yeah back to our home yeah being six minutes apart uh, I mean, six minutes from RV park to event was very nice to just come home, sit down for a minute, get something to eat and drink. And speaking of food, if you stay in Colombia, we did eat out one night for dinner and we went to a Mexican restaurant called Tequilas. Is that what it's called? Tequilas. What's that? Well, it was Tito's. No, I think it was no, tequilas. no, it's Tequilas. Delicious. Yeah. That was so good. And I thought it was reasonably priced too. Good. Uh, what else? So, uh, if you have the ability to use four wheel drive, it's probably a good good choice. The, True. The mm -hmm. It had rained very heavily the two days prior and we had come in early to mm -hmm. not rush. Uh, but it had rained quite heavily the two days prior. And the fields that everyone parked in were rolling hills. Mm -hmm. And in the low spots, it was. They put down a lot of straw trying to trying to get some traction, but the people in yeah. minivans and small cars were were burning up trying to trying to get up those hills whenever they would stop. So I mean, the if it had rained, it would have been a nightmare. Yeah, for all those people out of there. And the event is rain or shine, and I honestly don't know how you could have that event in the rain uh -huh. because you are in the sun the whole day. If you don't have a, a way of getting out of the sun yourself. So you would be walking in the rain from event, event to event, and the main stage is out in the open for the until the sun goes down. Mm -hmm. There's sun on it until the sun goes down. Yeah, even the uh, even the, the performers actually had it the worst because they were facing the sun. Yeah, they just, right. They were in the sun the longest. So I can, and then on top of the fact that it would, it's just got muddy. So I can't imagine. Don't wear your good shoes. No. Yeah, wear your good. Wear your wear your uh, homestay. Wear your homestay clothes. Yes. Uh, yeah, I can't imagine that the event could go go off at all with, in the rain. It would be pretty hard. Yeah, there'd be a lot of there'd be a lot of complaining if it rained. Or probably a lot of people leaving. I think uh, overall, it was a great success. It was me a great, too. Great trip, great adventure. Um, yeah. I really enjoyed. I enjoyed it a lot more than I thought I would. Yeah, it exceeded bring, my expectations. Bring a lot of money because there's a lot of cool stuff to buy. Yeah, I mean, and some some of it's a little expensive because someone has really put a lot of time and work into it. Um, but I thought a lot of the stuff was very reasonably priced. Like we uh, we had a what would you call it equipment malfunction? Technical <laughs> difficulties. So that's why that just went from like talking about the vendors to where we are right now. I think if we were saying to bring cash because for example when we were when I wanted to get a book from Joel Salatin it was cash or check only and um, I didn't have any cash and the people who were in line ahead of me offered to give me cash and I Venmoed them the money that they gave me and which was so great because I didn't have any cash and I was super bummed and and Sean did have cash, but he had went to go to the VIP area to pick up our swag bags. Um, so fast forward to the next day, and Morgan was meeting. She wanted a picture with Jill Salatin, and someone was like, "Oh, I have to go get cash." And I was like, "How much cash do you need?" And Morgan and I like put the cash together, and then she Venmoed us. So that was kind of fun. Like I was like, maybe they'll do that for someone else, and then they'll do that for someone else, and then everybody like had a community of cash and Venmo going on <laughs> but otherwise you could we use our you can use your debit card or your credit card or what have you yeah the majority of places the food trucks took it everyone took yeah it. and they even took Venmo like you can just Venmo them some of the places I have to get a Venmo yeah if you have Venmo but um so it's windy huh? now finally it's windy Did, I wonder now I don't even know 
I talked about <laughs> because we were. No, I don't think <laughs> Um, if I'm repeating myself, um, you'll just never know because I'll cut it out of here. But what I was saying is that we're in Middle Tennessee, in Columbia, Tennessee, unless a storm is coming in, it's very still. And in where we live in Raleigh, it's almost always windy. So it was, we were going to bring, I hope I'm saying it correctly, it's a shambooey, so. shambooey. And you know, you see them on the beach and it looks like kind of like a kite or a sail in the wind and it creates shade. And I had wanted to bring that and Sean was like, if it's not windy, it won't work. It'll just be flat on the ground and we'll have no shade. And I'm so glad he said that because there was no wind at all the whole time we were there for six nights, six days. So don't, if you're, if you have one of those, don't bring that, bring a different source of shade. But you probably do want to bring something for shade because there's no shade anywhere. Then you can bring a wagon in. Yeah, and you can bring a wagon. Like some chairs. We brought the wagon so we could bring our our yetis full of water. We could bring chairs because you can bring chairs and there were plenty of chairs. shade. You don't need to there bring were chairs. plenty of chairs. And as long as the same amount of people come next year, there'd probably be plenty of chairs. But they I'm were, worried there's gonna be a lot more people. <laughs> if you're an above average human, they were quite tiny chairs. <laughs>
obviously getting over that cold I had. It only takes about 13 seconds to fill up with that big truck <laughs> nozzle. T Sean was like, look at that, Toby. We just spent $113 in 10 minutes or 10, 10 seconds. seconds. Yeah. <laughs> no, that's not how you want to spend that kind of money. <sighs> but it was worth it was worth it to go to this event. Oh, I would say also that the uh, kids didn't need tickets that we bought. That's that's an important thing to know. Yeah, well, we weren't the only ones that made that mistake. So I knew that they didn't need general admission tickets. I didn't know where the age cutoff was, but I figured they didn't need them. But I wanted the whole reason that we bought VIP tickets were so that we could go into the air conditioned building with bathrooms and um, I didn't know the snacks were going to be provided. That was great. But if you like without going into too much detail, if you have anybody in your family who has food issues, you kind of want to have like a non portage on bathroom. <laughs> and so that was like my main reason. And so I was like, okay, great. Air conditioning, shade, bathroom, but yeah, for sure. So I was worried they wouldn't let the kids in if they didn't have VIP tickets. And VIP was selling out quickly, and so I bought VIP, and it turns out they're like, you did not have to do that. You know, the kids could have been, they're your VIP, so your kids would be VIP. I don't know. Did we find out what the age was, the cutoff was? Like no, 18 or 18? I don't know. Couldn't have been 18. Kind of used to like when we go to Disney and the cutoff is ten, um, which is. You if you know, if you decide to go and because uh, the VIP tickets were not cheap. Yeah. Um, I would definitely inquire about yeah. the cutoff if you're bringing kids along. Yeah, I'm going to ask. I'm going to ask for next year so that I know. The difference between four and two VIP tickets was. Awesome. Yeah, I mean I'll split the difference and buy one VIP for two kids. <laughs> If it's needed <laughs> um, but yeah I just need to find out uh, I don't think the VIP area was that crowded so you know I don't know what the age limit would be for kids there weren't a ton of kids there. but we have an almost 14 year old and an almost 13 year old they're starting to reach a point where they count as adults no matter what and they're definitely the size of adults Tiny little fawn. Oh my oh, goodness. Oh, oh my gosh, it was like hoppy. Oh that was cute. What did I miss? Okay, squirrel, deer. Um, I think that's all. <laughs> you think of anything else? No. no. It was a great time. Yeah. It's really, really enjoyable. Yeah. Alright, like and subscribe. We'll show you the garden when we get home without doing anything to it first, which will be hard. We'll let you see what it really looks like. It might be scared I'm not gonna lie but it is what it is and we will um see you soon